So this video has two, two main purposes. Number one is I wanna tell you the exact kind of things that we're gonna be covering in the unit testing course. So the exact things that you're gonna be learning before you actually start the course. And then I want to demo the application that we're gonna be building, just so you can see uh, kind of the big picture of what we're gonna be making in the course. Um, and just kind of before we get started, before I start talking about what we're gonna be covering, uh, I wanted to mention that if you don't know anything about unit testing, you don't know much about unit testing, watching this video on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, Testing on Android Explained, uh, unit testing, instrumentation testing, and UI testing, that's gonna be really helpful to you just to kind of give you uh, a picture before I start explaining things because I'm gonna be using terms that you won't understand. So um, it's actually the next video in this course if you look at the, the uh, course videos on my website. But since it's a paid course, you won't be able to watch it, but you can watch it for free on YouTube. So watch that course and then you'll kind of know uh, what's going on. All right, so the overall goal of this course is to teach you how to build professional grade unit tests so that whether you're walking into a job interview or you just wanna learn about unit testing or you want to walk up to your coworkers and show them that you've learned something. Kind of as a bonus too, you're gonna to be learning a lot of really cool things uh, that have to do with the newest kind of Android components out there today, which is view models, the room database, so DAOs, databases, uh, using a repository layer with MVVM, and then uh, how to test all of those things. So testing view models, testing repositories, uh, and then some other kind of simple testing stuff too with some simple classes. And as you've probably assumed from the title of this course, the main topic is unit testing. And if you watch the video that I just recommended, you'll know that the main topic is local unit testing. So yes, there's a difference between uh, regular unit tests or kind of uh, unit tests as a group, and then local unit tests. Uh, so basically, I want you to be able to test your code and make sure that everything is working. So um, the first the first kind of concept that you're going to be covering is, I'm just going to pull up my list here so I have a reminder of everything that was covered in the course. Uh, the first thing is JUnit 5. JUnit 5 is the newest version of JUnit. It was released in October 2017, uh, which doesn't seem that new, but in terms of JUnit lifetime, I guess, it is very new since JUnit 4, which was the version before that, I think that was released in like 2003 or something. So JUnit 5 is significantly newer. And I wanted to use JUnit 5 because uh, because it's the newest thing, basically. I want you to know how to build unit tests moving forward. So the bulk, probably 90% of the unit tests that we'll be writing in the course will be using JUnit 5. And um, you're probably wondering, what about that other 10%? We're going to be using JUnit 4 for that other 10%. Um, and I'm going to be using JUnit 5 and JUnit 4 uh, because I want to show you... Well, actually, I'll talk about that in just a second. In the next section, when I talk about uh, JUnit 4, I'll talk about why I'm using both and not just one. So JUnit 4 is the next concept that you're going to be learning, the next major concept. Um, so why am I using JUnit 4 and JUnit 5? Why not just use JUnit 5? Uh, some parts of the Android framework can't be tested using JUnit 5 because it's so new. Um, also, some other libraries aren't compatible with JUnit 5 yet. Things like RoboElectric, if you know anything about unit testing, you can't use JUnit 5 with RoboElectric yet. Uh, I'm sure eventually everything is going to be caught up, but as of right now, there's a few things that you can't do with JUnit 5 on Android. So to complete those sort of edge cases, I'm gonna be using JUnit 4. And uh, you know, there's not much difference between JUnit 4 and JUnit 5. They're, most of them share the same sort of flow, the same annotations, the same sort of, they're very, very similar. Um, but JUnit 5 is a little different and I wanna focus on what's new rather than the, the old way, which is JUnit 4. All right, so the next major concept is Mockito. Mockito is a third-party library, but uh, it's used in pretty much, you know, if you were to go get a job, probably 90 to 95% of those places where you're gonna go get a job are gonna be using Mockito. Uh, what is Mockito used for? It's, it's the most popular library out there for building mock objects, so, or mock classes, basically, so fake classes. And just to kind of give you an example, even though I'm gonna be talking about it in more detail in the course, uh, what is a mock object? Just to kind of paint you a bit of a picture. Imagine that you want to test a network request. So you're, you have a MVVM architecture, you have a repository layer, and inside that repository, you are making some request to some server, HTTP requests. <clears throat> So imagine testing that, 
in a test, you can't actually make the network requests. And it's not even a good idea in the first place because you can't really, uh, like the network does random stuff. And so in a, in a test, you want a set amount of criteria and you want a set um, uh, amount of responses. And then you want to build tests that deal with those things. So that's what Mockito does. You can basically mock a class. So you can mock your repository class and then you could define certain responses from the server. So given this condition, it will return this response. Given this condition, it will return this response and so on. So you can mock the class and make sure that your logic is working correctly. And given a certain input, you get a certain output. That in general is what Mockito is for. And like I said, probably 90 to 95% of jobs out there will be looking for Mockito experience if you are uh, doing anything with testing. So next on my list is testing with Android X. And if you are uh, you know, familiar with my videos or what's been happening in the Android community, Android, would you say Android community? What's been happening with Android is probably a better way to put it. Uh, Android X is the new way that they're gonna be organizing their dependencies. And there's, um, so there's new stuff even with testing. They've organized sort of uh, testing libraries, testing components into different Android X dependencies. So moving forward, you're gonna to need to know about these things. And I'm gonna be covering some of them in the course, not all of the Android X dependencies, just the ones that fit into the course flow uh, because I don't like to kind of teach random stuff. I like to be building something, uh, use a feature and then show you kind of how to use that feature. So the, the Android X dependencies that you're gonna be learning about in the course will be uh, dependencies related to testing a room database, testing a room DAO, uh, the application provider, which is how you get access to application context in a unit test and uh, using the instant task executor rule. That's not an actual class. It's going to be a class that we build a custom one. But if you Google instant task executor rule, you will find information on that because that's kind of the conventional name that people give to this class that they build. Basically, it allows you to um, do things on background threads in unit tests because you can't do that by default because uh, Android has this main thread, background thread, a uh, weirdness kind of happening. So that's how you kind of um, get through that problem. So learning how to use Android X dependencies will be valuable to you because that's the direction that the Android world is going in and you need to know what, uh, what kind of the newest kind of things are. So next is test-driven development. And I'm sure you've all heard of the term test-driven development. It gets thrown around a lot. Nobody really knows exactly what it means because everybody has their own interpretation of it. Um, it, it's, it stands for, or sorry, uh, some people say TDD for short, so test driven development. So if you ever see TDD, that's what people mean. Um, and it appears on many, if not all Android jobs. So if you go to apply for an Android job and you have experience with test driven development, they're probably going to look at you as an asset. So in the course, I'm gonna be using test-driven development to build the entire application. So uh, I'm building the application from the ground up, you know, create project and, and so on. And I'm going to be implementing test-driven development to build the whole thing. So you're gonna get kind of the big picture of how to use test-driven de development to build something real, build something testable, build tests as you go. And uh, for those of you who don't really know anything about test driven development basically it means you implement a small feature or an a, entire feature depending on uh, the way you interpret test di driven development uh, then you build tests for that specific feature once the test pass you move on to the next feature so you build another feature or another small piece of a feature and then you build tests for that and you iterate so it's kind of like it's your you're slowly building the application and you're building tests along the way. So at the end of the day, you get uh, an application that is pretty thoroughly tested. It should have very few bugs uh, because you've, you've kind of tested as you've built it. And it, it makes sense that a lot of employers want this kind of experience because uh, you're going to get a pretty solid application, almost guaranteed if you build your app that way. So the sixth and the last point that I'm going to cover is I'm going to be focusing on local unit tests. I might have said that at the beginning of this video, but I can't remember. Um, so hopefully you watch the YouTube video that I quoted at the very beginning of this video, where in that video I talk about the differences between local unit tests, uh, instrumentation tests, and UI tests. And I know that UI tests are technically, they technically fall within the category of 
instrumentation tests, but technically you could also say that instrumentation tests can be broken up into two categories, UI tests and unit tests. Uh, anyway, I'm probably confusing people if they don't know anything about unit testing. The takeaway from this point I want you to know is that we are going to be focusing on local unit tests in this course. So that means uh, using the Java virtual machine to write very fast unit tests to test the application logic. So very few of the tests are gonna be, we'll need an emulator or a real device. We're not gonna be testing the UI. That's, gonna, that's, a, that that's gonna be a totally separate course that I'll make uh, at some point later. Uh, we'll be focusing on local unit tests that run fast and don't require the emulator. So now we're going to explore the app that we're going to be building in the course. And right away, I'm sure that some of you are going to be thinking, wow, this, this looks very familiar. This app looks familiar. I've seen this before. Um, but for those of you who are thinking that, don't worry, there's a catch. This is the app that I built in my SQLite for Beginners 2019 course, uh, but it's it's quite a bit different. On the surface, it looks the same, but it's actually uh, like a totally different application. So in the Beginners course, I didn't use any advanced topics like Dagger, and no architecture, Rx Java, and I'm going to be using all of those things in this application when we build it. So basically, I'm rebuilding this app using MVVM architecture, Dagger 2, Rx Java, and of course, test driven development. So this is going to be very valuable if you want to see the whole picture, which obviously everyone wants to see the whole picture. They want to see something built from start to finish using all the most popular tools, all the most popular frameworks and test driven development. And uh, I just wanna say that this turned out really good. I actually challenge anybody who, who wants to uh, take a look at the source code and see if they can get this app to crash. It's really solid, you know, I think uh, you can try and do anything you want to it, press anything, rotate it, do whatever. It turned out really, and it turned out really solid because I built it using test-driven development. So if, if anything happens that's irregular when you're using it, let me know because I would be very surprised. Uh, so for those of you who don't know the SQLite for Beginners course, um, let's take a look and do a demo. So here's the app on the screen. Um, it's, I'm running it using the emulator. It's a note keeping application where I have some, some notes in the app already. So if I click one of these notes, I'm taken to the details about that note. I can edit it so I can edit some text. I can click the check mark. You can see that it gives me that update success message. If I go back and I click the same one, you can see that it has been updated. Uh, so let's, let's enter a new one so I can click the floating action button. I don't know, I'll just say like Android topics, and then I can do like Dagger, uh, MVVM, Rx Java, test driven development, and say I wanna save that note. So already you saw that if I click the check mark, the note will save. It will also save if I press the back button. So you can see that insert success, that means that note has been inserted into the database. I can go back, I can uh, scroll down to the bottom, and then there's that Android topics note that I just inserted. I can also delete notes. So if I slide to the right, the note is deleted. Um, yeah, so nothing, it's nothing crazy, but it's a pretty cool little app. I think it, it features a lot of uh, really fundamental skills. So let's quit talking about it and let's get started. For those of you who are watching this video on YouTube, you can get the course, you can get the unit testing course by going to my website, codingwithmitch.com, clicking on courses, and then scrolling down and selecting the unit testing two course. So just click that. And uh, right now there's no lectures posted, obviously because I'm filming the course, uh, but you can just register, create an account, and um, you can watch the course. Just keep in mind that you will need to become a member on my course to take this. Um, so if you follow, follow the registration process, uh, it will take you to the enroll page. Otherwise, you can just go to codingwithmitch.com slash enroll. And here is the, the page where you can subscribe to be a member on my website, where you get unlimited access to all of the courses, all of the resources, the community Discord channel, all for either $30 a month or $20 a month if you purchase an annual membership. Keep in mind that an annual membership is $240 per year. So if I click choose here, oh, I'm not, I'm not logged in or I'm already a member, but it's $240 per year or it's $30 per month. Month. Those are the two options. So I hope to see you in the course. It's a really great one and uh, I'll see you in that next video.